we're going to cover how to make this 3D model into a 2D drawing. And stick around for the end, because if you make changes to your 3D model, you can have it automatically update in the 2D drawing. All right, I have a part file in Fusion 360, and I want to create a 2D drawing based on this model. So first thing I'll do is save this file, then come up to the new pull down, find new drawing. And we're doing it from a design, not a new drawing template that's empty that will then kind of tie into another model. We're going to do from this design. Okay, things it's asking me for, the assembly. Do you want to do what's visible or select? This happens to be one component and in fact one body. So I'm just going to create a drawing based on this part. Okay, so what we want to do is from scratch, we're not using an existing template. What standard would you like it drawn to the way that it's going to detail out on the drawings, ASME versus ISO, and then units. Typically, I think ASME is in inches, but you can do millimeter. This is a big gotcha with Fusion 360. I wish it wasn't, but when you make this selection, start your drawing, and you notice everything's in millimeter or in inches, and that's not what you wanted, dun dun da. That's a problem. You have to basically start over. You can show duplicate units, things like that, but we're still, I'm still waiting on a fix from the Fusion development team to uh, allow us to change that. That is, most CAD packages can change the drawings after the fact. I think this would be huge if they could fix that. Can't wait. Just be really careful when you select it. Now, what drawing size would you like to go on? Do eight and a half by 11 or a size B, hit OK, it launches the drawing. Great, so the first thing that it's doing is placing a base view or the first view. And you can place this kind of wherever you like, but if you're gonna follow a typical drawing style where we've got the front view, and you'll notice some options over here in this drawing view palette. First off, you can change the view that it references. So if we go to the top, it's gonna to look at the top view back from the part model. Pretty cool. So we go to the front view, and this is where we can change the style, where we're going to different wireframes and shaded, uh, visible with hidden edges. But you notice the preview is not updating until I hit OK. So we'll continue on, but I'm gonna change the scale. So I'm gonna do a one to two. It's gonna make it larger. Now, what about edge visibility? Do you wanna see those tangent edges? We can't really tell much from this particular view, but um, there's not many tangent edges to show, but that's where you can turn this on and off as far as those additional like rounded edges and thread edges as well. Okay, we hit okay. So now that view updates and you can see it goes with the style that I selected. And we have this view, we can zoom in and out, but this is a 2D version of what uh, we just made in the design. You can see there's a new tab where the drawing lives. And of course, saving is always a great idea. And this is saving as the drawing based off of the part model or the design's name. I'll save it in the same folder. Great, so it's saved. And we're at the V0 of the drawing, or V1, excuse me, now that we saved, um, versus the V3 of the part model. So they can be different, and that's totally normal because this has to do with the 2D version of this design. All right, so let's continue on, and we want to do some more views. There's, we can simply drag in um, a, any view we want, or we can do this intelligent version where we're basically projecting off of an existing. And the way it projects is as if it's in a bathtub, right? And that has to do with um, maybe the standard that you're used to. Um, in America, we typically do, I believe, what's called third angle projection, where it's, you know, rolling it. I like the bathtub analogy. And if you want to see more about projection views, I made a video just on that. So check that out in the description. Okay, so I select these views. I drag them in can even drop in an isometric view, okay? When you're done, you can hit this um, right click, you can hit okay, and that'll finish out the views. Now, what about moving them? At any time, you can drag them, pull that little uh, hotspot, 
You can also use the move and rotate commands right from the toolbar. Now what about a section view and a detail view? Now this is really cool. So you select the view that you care about first. Then you go in and you, it basically does this sketch line tool. It'll keep going to let you jog. So if you do have a complicated part that you want to kind of align with, you can. Very cool. But what, what I'm doing is drawing a line down the middle and dragging this over. And what this creates is a section view. You can see there's additional parts where we can change the style um, as well as even the scale and the name of the section view. Hit OK. And so it's cutting to this side and creating this section view. You can see that's why the hole is showing up here. When you're placing it, that's where you can control which uh, side we're cutting to and which way it's um, doing the section view. So that's our section view. Then if we get into a detailed view, same thing. Select the view and then you're effectively, it's letting you sketch a circle. And from there, it's creating that circle that then creates a section view, excuse me, a detail view. And here we can also, similar rules, we can do scaling and we can set this up um, to have the detail name. And here we could come in and add notes and dimensions onto this detail view if we want to. Now let's also look at some of this built-in geometry here. So first thing, um, we can select edges and it'll drop in an automatic center line. And so I can even uh, drag and realign my section view and it updates. So I'm now aligned with that center line. We can also, I believe we can um, make a relationship. So if I select these two, so this is a little tricky, you can't actually make a relationship, but you can snap it to that point. So now it's uh, connected. So I've got the section view aligned with that center line and it updates the view. Do a center mark on one of these circles. So I select it and it places it, or I could do a center mark pattern where I select uh, one of these and it's doing all of them for me all at once along with the center mark if, want, if I want that. Great, so I'm gonna change this different from the parent. Click OK, and I wanna add some dimensions. I'm gonna come up and this is kind of the auto dimension where I'm selecting edges and it's placing um, what are reference dimensions or um, dimensions built off the part model. So if I double click and change this, to, you notice when I double click on this dimension, if I were to try to change it, I can't really. This is a reference or measurement based off the part model. Now, what about text? Uh, very similarly, you can select uh, an area or a zone and start your text for notes. And then I could copy paste from my Word document or from another drawing if I have those handy. We also have the ability to do surface textures, um, the GD&T and datums here, along with notes and leaders um, from the toolbar. So I'm going to get into that in a different example video, as well as even the bill materials or the table that you might be thinking of and the balloons. That'd be more appropriate for an assembly. Now, what about double clicking? You can wake up the title block, and this is where um, you can come in and make these edits to your title block along with um, bringing in a, your own custom title block. That's something that they added a little while back, I believe, um, in Fusion 360, so we'll be exploring that later. Okay, a few other things to be aware of in the drawing. So you'll notice that it's referencing that design file, but also it's one sheet, and if we click this little plus sign, that's where we can get that second sheet, do additional dimensions, additional views, especially helpful when you're doing assemblies. For a part, that may not be necessary, but we could generate that. Now, what about um, making changes to this model? So if I have a sketch, and I think I've got a little, little sketch there. Oop, okay, let's throw a sketch on this face. Great, I'm gonna extrude this. Coming up, so we've added an additional boss, and what I want to do is hit save, it updates the design file, go to the drawing tab. You'll notice that it gives you that 
uh, update that the reference is out of date even gives you a warning. This is great. I love this. And in Fusion, you can kind of choose to overwrite it, which is cool. But what I want to do is just tell it to update. And I love this in all the CAD tools out there like SolidWorks, Inventor, Fusion, how you can update the part model, the design, and it updates the drawing. Dimensions update, the views update, section views. I love that. If you're if you ever had to touch AutoCAD back in the day, um, you know that this just took a ton of manual work to redo a simple design change like that. But you don't have to with Fusion. This is super cool. All right, so kind of going to um, the outputs. I'm going to explore that a little bit again. Different video to get into the nitty gritty, but if you want to output this a PDF or um, save um, maybe the table to a CSV, but do we want to save all the sheets or just one or a specific sheet? Um, and do we want to do um, control the line weights? What, we, you know, what do we want to pass along to the PDF? Hey, so if you'd like to learn a little bit more about drawings, have more of those in this playlist, along with some other videos that YouTube thinks will be helpful for you. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.